Weedle on the Needle. Many, many years ago, before explorers sailed to the Northwest, there lived a large, happy creature called the Weedle. He was pleasingly plump, covered in orange, fluffy fur, and had a big, round, red nose. He spent his days sniffing flowers and enjoying the peace and quiet that nature offered. Forever and a day, everything was peaceful, until one afternoon. The Weedle watched curiously as a large ship sailed into the bay. Laughing loudly, workers jumped from the ship and set about clearing the land and building this, that, and other things. As they worked, they whistled. The more they worked, the more they whistled. All that whistling hurt the poor Weedle's ears. The whistling continued night and day, and the Weedle could get absolutely no sleep at all. With no sleep, he became grouchier and grouchier. If he was ever to get some sleep, the Weedle knew he must put a stop to all this whistling. Hmm, he thought. If the workers don't have their tools, they won't be able to work. And if they can't work, they won't whistle. So later that night, he sneaked into the workers' camp and took all of their tools. Sadly for the Weedle, the next morning, the men quickly got new tools from the ship and went back to work, whistling even louder than before. If anything, the Weedle was resourceful. He decided that the next best thing to do was to scare the workers. For when workers are scared, they can't pucker. And when they can't pucker, they can't whistle. As we all know, a puckerless whistle is no whistle at all. One by one, he began creeping up behind them and growling at the top of his voice. Sure enough, the workers were so scared that they couldn't whistle a whit. All would have been the Weedle's salvation, save for one brave lumberjack, who, to prove he wasn't scared, simply whistled. The Weedle put his hands over his ears and ran into the forest. Well, let me tell you, that did it. The Weedle knew he could no longer live near the bay, so he packed his belongings and left. He wandered high into the mountains, searching for a place far enough away from workers that he wouldn't hear the whistling. He wandered and wandered until he came to the very top of Mount Rainier. He listened very carefully. What a delight. He couldn't even hear a whisper of a whistle on the wind. He quickly unpacked his sleeping bag, his toothbrush with the squiggly on the end, and his white woolly pajamas. This was the quiet place he had hoped for. This was a place where he could sleep for a long, long time. He quickly brushed his teeth, washed his furry hands, and slipped into his woolly pajamas. Then he slid his big body into the sleeping sack, flopped his head on his pillow, and fell fast asleep. He was so happy in his deep sleep that his big red nose blinked on and off like a flashing beacon on a tall pole. He slept through the night, through the day, through weeks and months, and on through several years. Oh, such sweet, sweet dreams. But after a long while, something woke the Weedle from his deep sleep.
whistling, loud, whistling, happy, whistling. He looked about, and much to his surprise, he saw that the workers had continued to build over the years, and now had built almost to the edge of his mountain. But what was more alarming was that now everybody was whistling, children and workers alike. Oh no, cried the beetle. What am I ever to do? With all this whistling, I'll never get back to sleep. He began pacing up and down the mountain, mumbling and grumbling all the while. Then his nose lit up and a smile crossed his lips. I've got it, he chuckled. And with that, he removed everything from his large, striped bag, and with it, dragging behind, he climbed to the very top of Mount Rainier. He stood on his fuzzy tiptoes, reached up into the sky, and grabbed a cloud. Then he grabbed another, and another. One by one, he stuffed the clouds into the bag, until he had it full to overflowing. With the bag thrown over his shoulder, he set out for the source of his noisy whistling problem, the growing city of Seattle. The skyline of the city was filled with tall buildings, but the wheel only needed one to complete his plan. And the one he chose was the Space Needle. giddy to put his plan in action he hurried to the base of the space needle jumped into the elevator and zipped to the very top there he stood and looked about all around were happy children and workers all whistling and laughing having a great time the wheel chuckled as he reached deep into the soggy bag he grabbed a fluffy cloud by the tail and then slung it around and around and flipped it into the air The cloud lifted high into the sky and then hung there like a glop of whipped cream on a blue kitchen ceiling. The cloud gurgled and sloshed and then one drop of rain fell and then another and another. Soon it was pouring. Now the kindly folks in Seattle like the rain, but it is nearly impossible and highly improbable that one can whistle with any intensity in a rainstorm. With the rain falling all around, everyone ran inside, and soon it became very still, very quiet indeed. The wheel stretched out on top of the space needle, and using the bag of clouds as a pillow, fell fast asleep. With each snarkled snore, his big red nose slowly blinked on and off. And as he slept, it rained and rained. And it rained. The people of Seattle had to stay inside, and they became very sad. It didn't take much to figure out that someone was throwing clouds into the sky from the top of the Space Needle. Finally, the mayor himself went to the Weedle on the Needle to plead with him to stop throwing rain clouds into the sky. Please, said the mayor, would you stop throwing clouds into the sky? The kindly folks of Seattle love to whistle while they work, but with all the rain, there is little to whistle about, and without whistling, there is little work being done. The Weedle said he was sorry, but still, and all he couldn't sleep when he heard whistling, there was nothing he could do. Now the mayor thought, and thought, and quickly devised a plan, a wonderful plan. Indeed. The mayor's plan was a simple plan, and sometimes simplicity is best. All through the night and into the next morning, sailmakers stitched and sewed cotton, flannel and wool. Miles of thread were laced through the eyes of needles, 
As the weathered hands of the sailmakers sewed, they sewed pink flannel onto yellow wool and blue cotton onto red flannel, and by early morning they had finished their task. Whoever said that mares never think a thoughtful thought? This was a good plan. This plan was great. At precisely noon, not a minute before, and not a minute after, the mare again met with the weedle on the needle. In his hands, he held the largest pair of earmuffs you have ever seen. These earmuffs are for you, said the mayor in his most political of voices. With these on your ears, you won't hear a thing. You won't hear us whistle. You won't even hear the big whistles from the ships in the harbor or the trains going by. The weedle pulled the earmuffs over his ears and was surrounded in the delight of silence. He didn't hear the kindly folk of Seattle cheering. He didn't hear the end of the mayor's speech. With the earmuffs in place, he simply rolled over and fell fast asleep. So content was he that his big red nose again began to blink. There's a weedle on the needle. I know just what you're thinking, but if you look up late at night, you'll see his red nose blinking. <laughs>